Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. Today I'm joined by Dr. Margaret Noctegal. She is a frequent visitor here to uh, Gruff Talk, and uh, she is a board-certified reproductive endocrinologist at NYU Langone Health. And welcome back to Gruff Talk, Dr. Margaret. Thank you. So good to be here, Barbara. So, Dr. Margaret, a few weeks ago, a new study came out of Denmark, of all places, that is causing a lot of confusion and concern among women and really also a lot of their health care providers. Uh, the, the study itself and the ensuing media coverage has caused women to ask this really important question. Is hormone therapy putting me on the fast track to dementia or is hormone therapy helping me to lower my risk for dementia as other studies have shown? So you see, it's very, very confusing. So can you give us an overview, Dr. Margaret, of the study that came out and what are some of the highlights and what does it really tell us about that connection? Absolutely. So first, I mean, I think this is a confusing area because there really is no absolute answer yet. Um, the article was an article that came out. It used the Denmark registry of 56,000 Danish women and from the years 2000 to the year 2018, so oh, about an 18-year period. And what it did was it compared patients that were on hormone therapy and not hormone therapy in terms of Alzheimer or other dementia. They found 5,500 women who had dementia. But um, one of the things that I really want to mention is that this did not take patients and give them estrogen and then look to see if they developed Alzheimer's or dementia. What they did is they looked at patients with dementia and then compared whether they had taken estrogen combined with progesterone or had it. And what they saw was that in the patients that had taken estrogen and progesterone together, they did see an increase in dementia. Um, and so one of the things that I was hoping that we could do today is to sort of go through a, a little bit about the study and then try to talk about other studies that have also looked at estrogen and dementia and Alzheimer's because many studies have shown, uh, many excellent controlled studies have shown that estrogen given early within the first five years of menopause actually decreases the onset of Alzheimer's or dementia. So I think that this is a really important topic and hopefully we can um, talk about it. In terms of the media, I think a lot of people have done a great job of trying to figure out where does this article fit with the other facts that we have about hormone therapy and just meaning the other studies that meaning have the come other before. studies mm -hmm. exactly and just today there was really an excellent um, article in the New York Times in the science section of the New York Times which uh, looked at this in context with other studies. So I, I hope we can talk a little bit about that today. I'll make sure to put a link to that article. There usually is a paywall for the New York Times, right. but um, you know I'll still add that link as well as links to some other articles that have come out about the study. A few things that have come up. I mean, you, you know, I'd like you to review some of the weak spots of the study that mm -hmm. you and some of your mm -hmm. colleagues believe mm -hmm. it has, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. it really is considered an observational study, um, exactly. number one, right? And also what's, a, I think, concerning to a lot of women and why the media picked up on it so much because I saw it in a lot of the headlines mm -hmm. is that this, this whole issue also happened apparently observationally with younger women, women who were 55 and, and who were on hormone therapy for shorts amount of time. So it wasn't like they were older and on for a long, long time. So I know that was part of the concern for sure. So just tell us a little bit about some of the weak spots well, in your view. First and, and foremost, I think just what you said, which is that it's an observational study, which means they're observing rather than doing, and it's not controlled. The ideal study is a study that's randomized, that's controlled, meaning that 
one group is compared against another group and it's random who's going to get the hormone therapy or whatever we're going to be testing. And then we measure an outcome. But that's not what happened here. Here we're just observing, which means that it's possible that people had symptoms, symptoms of menopause, such as hot flushes, trouble sleeping, depression. And for that reason, we know that estrogen is very beneficial in being able to alleviate those symptoms. Well, it just so happens that those symptoms by themselves have been associated with an increase in dementia and Alzheimer's. So it's possible that the reason that they saw this association, recognize they see an association, but even the people that wrote the article did not say that this shows any causation. They just said that there was this association. So what's possible is that the reason that that association existed was because patients with those symptoms can develop an increase in dementia and increase in Alzheimer's, and those were the ones that received the hormone. And it's possible that receiving those hormones was at a time perhaps um, that was later than able, than the heart, then the hot flushes and the insomnia and the dementia had already been causative of dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, so we can't say that, that there is any, any cause to that. In fact, um, in the New York Times article, uh, Dr. Moscone is, is um, quoted in showing that she is a, a for for those of you um, who may not be familiar with Dr. Moscone's work. She did a terrific TED Talk a few years ago about brain health and menopause and, and drops in estrogen. Really excellent. I'll add, thank you for reminding me, mm-hmm, Dr. Margaret. Mm-hmm. I'll make sure and add a link to that. But she does research um, in brain health. And, um, and she uh, had mentioned that hot flushes have been associated with hyperintensities in the brain and that that can be a sign of dementia or of other neurogenic um, diseases. So it, it could, what we don't know now is, are there the symptoms that is the increase in dementia or is it a treatment that is the um, cause? So I think that is one big thing, which is that the, the study was not a controlled study. Right, And I think it is important to mention that there are controlled studies, such as the WHI, which did show, and that is a controlled study, you know, of many women, and what it did show is that when hormone therapy was initiated and started within the first five or even the first 10 years, that there was a beneficial effect and that there was a lower incidence of dementia and Alzheimer's. So I think that's very important and, and makes sense. Also, there are other studies. There is a study um, that was also quoted by Dr. Moscone that showed, um, that was observational, but it did look at 380,000 patients, and it showed a protective effect. Um, So when we look at these studies, we have to take many of them into context, I think. Um, And then there was a very nice uh, study looking at a lot of different studies together, and it showed that when hormone therapy was initiated early, there was a protective effect. And when we wait, and it's initiated later than 10 years, Mm -hmm. there was a detrimental effect. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important. What you and I often call, when you've been on the show before talking about all of this and so much more, we often call that the window of opportunity. Absolutely. You do, it's not, it's absolutely. not finite. I mean, no. I mean you know, no, it's absolutely. not infinite. It is finite. It's, it's not infinite, absolutely. It, it is not, and, then, and, uh, and that's right. important to note. And then I think another thing that's really important about this particular study is that from what I understand from the study, it looked at combination of estrogen plus a specific type of synthetic progesterone. And so it did not look at estrogen alone So it really can't talk about estrogen and its effect because this is estrogen combined with this synthetic um, progesterone, which we really try not to use so much right now. And also, it's lumping all, you know, we don't know which 
types, what doses they were using. It was over 18 years. So what was started 18 years ago may be very different from what we're prescribing right now. Um, and also, when we talk about estrogen and, and estrogen now, we know we have so many options. We have oral estrogen. We have transdermal estrogen through the skin, patches, creams, gels. Um, and there are all sorts of different doses. So I think there's a lot here that um, it, it's something to think about, and it definitely makes us think about what we want to do in, for more studies. But I think one thing that I would take from it is yes, from what today's... Yes, I think that's what we are well, now getting to. What, what do we want to tell women who are listening in right now and are confused and also concerned? I mean, maybe they were on hormone therapy and maybe aren't anymore and are worried, gee, am I now on a fast track to dementia? Mm -hmm. it, it's a I, big concern I, for a I lot of people. I definitely, you know, don't think that's the case. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at s studies that are done on estrogen and on, um, especially in cell culture and in the lab, we mm -hmm. have recently had some great studies that show that estrogen prevents tau protein, and we know that tau protein is important for the development of Alzheimer's. So estrogen prevents tau protein from phosphorylating, which means it's not making its tangles. And it's the tangles that increase the likelihood of Alzheimer's. So if estrogen is decreasing the tangles, it's decreasing Alzheimer's. So it certainly makes sense that it would be beneficial. It makes sense that it would decrease Alzheimer and decrease dementia. And then, of course, we have those controlled studies that are representing and showing that. And Dr. Fabian, uh, who's the medical director for the Menopause Society, um, she says we shouldn't change our practice based on this article. Um, makes it very clear that there are many factors that are involved for the things that we just talked about. It's not controlled. We don't have the dose. We don't know the delivery system. It's a combination of a estrogen plus uh, synthetic progesterone. So I think that would be what I would say is that um, we shouldn't change our practice, that it's so important for everyone who is experiencing menopause to look at it for themselves. What are their personal risks? What are their personal advantages? Do they have a family history? You know, so I think that's always the message. And then I think the other message is that the symptoms alone of hot flushes, insomnia, depression, these are all symptoms that may increase the risk of dementia or Alzheimer's. So if you have those symptoms, one, I do think it's beneficial to get them treated just right. for the symptoms, but also do other things that can also decrease the onset of dementia, dementia whether it's getting daily exercise, not smoking, um, you know, walking, getting adequate sleep, Doing all the eating well, doing managing all the stress, other a big thing that we want to do, mm -hmm. and take that into consideration. So I think, you know, healthy living is very important. I think that this is an interesting study, and it certainly got a lot of people talking about menopause, which is probably a good thing. It's a and, good thing. It's a good thing. Yes, and it highlighted the fact that symptoms are important, not only because they're disruptive, but also because they may have serious ramifications in terms of our brain chemistry, heart chemistry, and other parts of our life. So I think that's really good to recognize. And, um, and so I think it was, it's, it's really served a good purpose. And it also teaches us that any study that comes out that we have to look at how the study was done, what are they looking at, and then that stems more research. Correct, and mm -hmm. uh, as we know, women's health uh, research is woefully underfunded, um, and uh, we really need to make a change with that. And I, I think that that will help uh, with, in so many areas of women's health across the board. I mean, an example I gave in the intro 
is that um, a recent study showed that uh, I think only about a third of people who are involved in uh, heart health studies, cardiovascular disease studies, are women and the rest are men. And even though heart, you know, cardiovascular disease is still the number one killer of women. So there's a lot that has to change in general. And you're right, you made a very important point, the fact that once again, um, a little spotlight has been placed on menopause and hormone therapy, which we think is a great thing. We want more discussion about it. Um, and if this helps, great, but I just am hoping, and I really think uh, if people listen to you, in this episode, they, they won't be as concerned, but I'm really concerned myself that people will be um, well, confused and I, worried and, um, and may like backpedal a bit on mm -hmm. their uh, openness about hormone therapy, which has so many benefits, as you pointed well, out. Well, you know, I think that we point out regularly that yes, it does have benefits for the right person, but it also yes. has risks for some people. Mm -hmm. So I think the message always comes down to it's an individual decision and right. making an individual decision for, uh, you know, so it's, it's not as though one thing is good and one thing is bad. It's that this is available, and it might be right for you, and it might be beneficial for you, but it also might not be. And if it is beneficial, how should I take it? Should I take it by mouth? Should I take it in a patch? Should I take it in a gel? Do I need progesterone? Because if you have a uterus, you have to have some progesterone to balance the estrogen. And so all of these factors are so important, and hormone therapy is, um, a great tool. It's something that we have. It's, it's an a agent tool that we can use, but um, it's not right for everybody. So I think that it is, you know, always going to be a conversation. It's always going to be a conversation. You're right, especially as more and new research does come out. You know, we did do an episode on um, brain health a while back, and yes. I'm going to post the link to that. I hope everyone listens to it because that will delve much more deeply into some of those other studies because this study had not yet come out right. um, about all the, you know, the benefits and the connection between estrogen and hormone therapy and, uh, right. and brain health and, and uh, you know, what's, what's, how we're looking forward with uh, future research. So right. I'll make sure to right. post that. And Good. Dr. Margaret, I like, thank you so much for taking time out of your incredibly busy day as you always do to kind of shed light on these big topics and um, explain things to us in layman terms that we can all understand and we really appreciate you my pleasure so fun to be here always good to talk with you and I, I look forward to our next yeah you'll conversation. be back soon yeah.